Hello. Hi, is this Greg? Yes, it is. This is Kristen Hirsch. Hey, Kristen. How you doing? Okay. I hope this uh, this time was convenient for you. I didn't. So far, it is. I'm in charge of a couple kids and a dog. There's no husband around. So <laughs> <laughs> Uh oh. You'll know. Well, if you have <laughs> it to inter- inconvenient suddenly. If you have to interrupt at any moment, feel free. <laughs> okay. It's not live radio or anything. No. Um. I guess the first thing I'd ask you is, I mean, are you pleased that the album has gotten, you know, so much good press and you know people seem to really like it? I mean, did you expect that, or when you put this out, did you think people would really respond to it? I didn't even expect to put it out. I just did it for um, Billy and me, my my husband. Um, it was like a photo album for us. But when uh, both labels heard it, they they both wanted to put it out, or put the demos out. <laughs> <laughs> Geek. <laughs> um, so I wrestled with the idea of even making it into a real record. You know, much less putting out the, my diaries um, and made a, a real record out of it. But you the demos as the prototype so these actually sound I mean Hips and Makers sounds more raw than the demos do just because I didn't need to use any fake disco reverbs on, on top right. of the sounds um, and then knowing that people like big glossy pop records I figured well it'll be you know what it is it's, it's a pretty piece and, and I love it but nobody else is going to like it it's small and raw and weird this is the opposite of what they're supposed to like um so i i'm stunned um but i'm not complaining either oh that's good <laughs> <laughs> um do you did it, so it's not something you'd uh you know you thought about in the back of your mind over the years like oh someday i'd like to do this like acoustic album or you know a more intimate thing without a whole band it, it just kind of came out of just fooling around yeah, well, my, my husband had wanted me to do it, but I had a bad attitude as far as acoustic music was concerned. Like most people in rock bands, I thought it was wimpy, and um, it seemed like the acoustic artists I knew all, like, wore biker jackets and acted like they could be in a band if they wanted to be, because <laughs> they were tough enough. They just seemed so defensive about it, and none of them could really play guitar, and so I thought it was kind of a lame medium, um, and it took... Uh, a tour um, of, acoust- of Muse's material acoustic to raise money so Billy and I could get married um, for me to f- before I fell in love with the instrument itself which is a very gutsy instrument it's like playing a tree it's just wood and string you know <laughs> <laughs> you use muscles and air to make the sound and I think it, it attracts um, a real simple gutsiness um that I usually go to amps for. Right. Where, like, what is the general um, ages of these songs? Like, did you write them all for this, or were some of them intended for the muses, or um, are they a varying vintage? Uh, not really. Most of them were written on the muses' last tour, just in hotel rooms, and they're kind of globe-trotting chronologically <laughs> speaking. <laughs> right. They, the uh, record starts in Scotland, and travels around the world until it ends up somewhere in Australia or Hawaii, except for the letter, which is 10 years old, and the quiet part of Close Your Eyes, which is also 10 years old. Mm-hmm. You were talking about the, you know, the sound of the, <clears throat> the acoustic guitar, and um, that was the first thing that struck me, and I'm sure a lot of people about the record, was it had a really, like, different sound than you're used to hearing, you know, it was very warm and organic kind of sounding. Mm-hmm. Um, was that something that, like you found easy to get like na- you know it came out kind of naturally or did you and Lenny kind of work on getting the sound that way or um I traveled around the world looking for the perfect guitar as goofy as that sounds I was traveling no, I around the world understand anyway understand that <laughs> but um I went to um every music store and guitar shop I could find just playing Martins and Gibsons and Guilds and just Takaminis and Novations and um, I just didn't like anything, and I started to think, well, I, I don't like the instrument, so I'm not going to write good parts, and um, there's, I don't have an excuse to make a record <laughs> based on an instrument I don't even like. 
they all sounded so dead. And I'm used to being able to lob the neck off of one guitar and stick it on the other and glue all these sure. little pedals together and mess with amps and um, create any sound you want. So to be limited to one instrument that just sits on your lap and doesn't do anything, um, it didn't seem like it would draw m many good parts out of me. And then um, I came across this guy, Collings, um, in, uh, who works out of Austin, Texas, who I think is making the best acoustics in the world right now. The tiny little resonant things that have their own sustain, their own reverb, um, with beautiful natural pickups. And um, the whole record is just based on the sound of this guitar in that room. There was nothing more we had to do. We, do, we did use a, a miking setup um, that I got Phil Brown for almost a Motown or, or jazz technique where you take the character of each mic um, in, and the uh, placement in the room or near the instrument right. to create a very realistic sound picture. And if it sounds beautiful in the room, then it's going to sound beautiful going to tape, even if you need eight tracks for, the, um, for one instrument. You know, I wasn't going to put any overdubs on it anyway, so um, you can get a very pretty and yet raw sound that doesn't need any treatment. Right. Do you think, I mean, before I think people kind of, you know, looked at you more as like, you know, whether, you know, when they were thinking of you, they thinking of you as a songwriter or front, you know, front woman for the band, but it seems like this record more showcases, like, I don't know if people realized what a good guitar player you were. And even you, even you. I always thought acoustic guitar is like for sucky guitar players. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but it it really does do that, and and also, I mean, your voice too. I mean, you, you kind of can do a, a lot. I don't know. I mean, it sounds stupid, but you can. It seems like you can do a lot more sometimes. Mm. It, I was unprepared for the vocals taking up half a track sometimes. It, it's such a weird instrument to play a guitar. You know, you know when you have your hands on a fret and it's in tune, what it's going to do. But with a voice, it has to have the right character and tone. It has to be the right time of day. You have to have have had the right amount of alcohol in your bloodstream. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, and it, it depends on emotion of all things. Um, and so it, it was hard getting. I guess hard isn't the word, but I had to. Um, learn about filling out an entire sound picture just with my voice when I'm used to responding to drums and bass in a very full sound picture already they kind of eat up some of the resonance in my voice so I don't have some as much responsibility this was just crazy sometimes I had to sing out of tune just for the character to be right but then you can't have so much character that you sound insane right. or completely out of tune <laughs> were you were you um surprised when when you started writing the material um i mean obviously it's still you but there seems to be a, a it's not like the album sounds like a throw muses album just played acoustically mm. it, the material Unplugged. has a different go ahead say it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it you know it actually it has like a different character and i'm wondering if when you when you started writing and it started coming out did that surprise you um i didn't notice until after the fact <laughs> <laughs> Um, because it, it feels the same to write songs. If I'm doing a good job, then I'm just not there at all. I, I disappear, I shut up, and the song talks. So that didn't feel any different. I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't until um, I heard the record, I thought, wow, you know, <laughs> this is um, such a, a different little planet. I thought maybe that I got old and sucked. <laughs> because it, it seemed to be about me. It seemed to use so many of my life pictures when throwing music songs usually deal with the very external and the very internal and therefore just bypass my personality. Um, I thought, well, that's universal. And this is like <laughs> me, you know, my big hit. So what? Why? What right do I have to sell this to people? <laughs> um, and then I thought, well, how egomaniacal. I've got a dorky little life, yeah, but... So does everyone else. We all share coffee right. and shoes and stores and houses and sex and babies and drinks. And, you know, and, and they're so small that they're a big deal. They're almost archetypal as far as um, the way we live now. You, well, you mentioned that, they, that you thought of the most as diaries, and, and I was wondering if it was also kind of strange to, you know, be, like, I mean, a lot of 
people I know thought it sounded very almost confessional in the sense not you were confessing anything, but you know it's just yeah. it's very there. It's not like it's you know sometimes if you listen to a band like the Muses, you can focus on the lyrics or not depending on your right. inclination. Whereas this, it's like it really it hits you and you really pay attention to the words and. Yeah, I always just ignore the lyrics in, in anything. I just thought, well, it's just the words, you know, you don't have to hear them. And I would find myself rewinding my Walkman if I miss a line. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it makes some things stick out, like 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 really interesting lines, like like jump out at you, like the one in Teeth where you say this hairdo is truly evil. I uh -huh. thought that was really hilarious. And, and I might not have noticed that if there was a lot of music going on, right, but like yeah. you heard, you know, it came out really clear. Um. um yeah, I. It's a very naked stance. Um, I realized after after performing it for a month. Um, but there's a lot of strength in that. If you're gonna go and do it, you might as well be strong in that. And like I said, I'm still disappeared. So it, if it's a good song, then it's not limited just to me. If I were telling my story, then I might think twice about going out and. Um, making the assumption that people should pay money to sit there for an hour and a half and watch me, you know, tell my story <laughs> and then care about it. But um, the songs are strong and they're always beautiful and I always learn from them. Um, how do you, like, do you see any difference between performing them live as to how you recorded it or, I mean, not like you have any problem recreating it, it's uh, just wondering if, if the songs kind of take on any other, you know, if they shift a little bit live or it's pretty much the same as when you played it on the record um and also do you, do you find it like hard like playing just you know you and your guitar there in front of an audience like it's probably different than when it was recording it it's, it's a little easier now because i know the songs better right um, that that could i think that's always the case though when you make a record you, you have just learned the songs so you, you're not real sure of their um, body yet. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's the same here. They've changed a little bit, um, but I'm not thinking at all. It's easier for me to just put the piece of wood on my lap and jump in. Do you pretty much stick to you know, the, the album in its entirety, or do you throw in any other material? or? It's not quite long enough, so I, <laughs> I throw in other material. I play um, a, some covers, some music songs, and some new songs. I got lots of B-sides, so... Right. Um, it, I'm on 4AD in England, so they, they have so much product. They put out a record, and they're like, well, we need nine more songs. <laughs> I know, all the, all the mini EPs they exactly, do and stuff. yeah. So I have like a whole other record worth of material just for the B side. Um, did you find like it easy to how do I put this like like arrange the material like I, I you know I found it interesting that some of it had the cello and is that is that you playing piano on B stung? Mm -hmm. That's like one of my favorite songs on the record. Oh really? Yeah, I, I really like that one. And I was wondering if you know if it, you know how you determine which song would get what treatment or um bee stung i dreamt and i dreamt it as a piano song and i hate playing piano <laughs> i just am not drawn to it at all an instrument that you can't hold um and and i thought oh shit i don't want to play a piano song um, so i tried to um transpose it onto guitar and it just sounded goofy so um, I ended up playing it. You can hear my feet like swinging <laughs> above the piano bench. <laughs> Sounds like a little piano recital. Um, There's something really haunting about that song. Like, uh, you know, the first time I heard it, 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 it seemed familiar to me, not in the sense like I thought I'd heard it really before, that it was, you know, appropriated from anything, but it just had a certain kind of, um, used the word archetypal before. It had this almost like lullaby, mm -hmm. like sing song feel that, I don't know, it just sounded it really. I don't know. There's something about it that I, I really related to, and I was wondering if, you know, it just, like you said, it came to you in a dream. I mean, that, that makes it seem even more, uh, I don't know, like a fantasy song. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. It's so sweet. It's, it's just plain sweet. But mm -hmm. it also is 
a little creepy. I guess it's like your ghost that way. It's like this hint of death in it. <laughs> right. <laughs> like your ghost, but it's it's so sweet at the same time. I guess it's like children that way. Children are real scary and real sweet at the same time. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what archetypal is, really. How did you, like, did you right away think that you'd want to use Michael on your ghost, or did it just kind of... No, not at all. Um, I don't really like involving other people because it... Um, well, I'm, I'm shy, for one, but I also lose my focus. And this is just this goofy little thing. I knew no one would ever hear. Um, so... I, I, Michael had the demos he got from one of my managers, and um, he knew the songs anyway, and he would check in to make sure the album was staying true to the demos, and I called him up whining one day because the cello sounded so weird. My fake cello part sounded great, and the real cello came in, and it was just scary. It's like this <laughs> sound. <laughs> it was fighting with my squeaky vocals, and um, so I, I knew he worked with a cello um so I knew he'd worked with a cello before, and he hadn't even worked with Jane before, and I didn't want to say to Jane, what's wrong with you? Why does it sound so weird? <laughs> so I, I called Michael while the parts were going down, and he said, well, try moving the mic over here, blah, blah, blah. And, um, I didn't hear anything. He said, I just heard the sound of his voice in one ear and your ghost in the other, and it sounded great in my head. So I interrupted him without thinking and asked him to sing on it, and he did, and it... it fixed all my EQ problems, and and then I started to think, well, God, he's not my next door neighbor, he's famous, so <laughs> tacky, you know, maybe it shouldn't be the single, if there is a single, and, um, but, you know, I, I, I'm tacky, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll do anything to sell um, this record, because I think it's, it's great, it's not like I'm tricking anyone into buying a bad record, I'm tricking them into buying a good record. <laughs> well... I don't know, I, I think it would certainly appeal to a lot of people, especially, I mean, I don't know, like, like I said, it does sound different than so much of what is out there, and I remember I, I saw you on uh, 120 Minutes last month, and it just, it, you know, it, it even struck me more, like that little set you did, you know, yeah. it just really stuck out uh, really? compared to the stuff that was, like, on around it, uh -huh. and, and, you know, I think that that might interest people. I certainly don't think it's an accessible record at all. Beast song, I think, by the way, is, is the second single now. Oh, good. I, um, yeah, I really like that song. Surprise to me, because I said a long time ago, I, well, you pick whatever single you want, but it can't be Beast song, because I'm never going to play it. I'm not going to cart a piano around, <laughs> <laughs> and I hate playing it anyway. Um, so they made it the second single instead. That's funny. I could almost hear you doing that a cappella. I think it would, it wow. might work. Because I could just like play the bass line on the guitar. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, what, one thing I was, I was oh, going to... hold on. Sure, sure. What's the matter, honey? Yeah, I think it's... Yeah, I Hi. Sorry about that. That's My two-year-old sent the VCR careening into the area behind the TV. Oh, no. He scared the shit out of himself. 
<laughs> there's this little metal art dog that we have <laughs> we got for our wedding. For our wedding, for some reason, people only gave us art and bowls. So we have like 75 art that we don't oh, understand no. and 75 bowls that we have nothing to put in. Where do you fit them all? <laughs> They're like all on the mantle, all mm -hmm. of them. <laughs> like, what are you supposed to put in bowls if you have something? It just doesn't occur to me to put it in a bowl. But um, anyway, the art dog is very, very loud. And um, the whole thing just came crashing down. I thought he broke the TV. He, was, he wasn't hurt, though. I just wanted to watch a movie! I just wanted to watch a movie! <laughs> he wasn't hurt, though. No, oh, no. That's good. Just a little scared. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, coincidentally, is kind of what I was going to ask you. I mean, I, I read a lot of articles on you over the last couple of years, and it, it seems like so many people focus on this thing, oh, you know, she's a housewife and she has kids, blah, blah, blah. And, I mean, does, does it seem strange to you that, that, like, people think that that's strange? Well, not strange, but that an item of interest, like, well, pe people who make music shouldn't have normal lives and yeah, do normal right. things. I mean, if, I mean, does that seem strange? If you do, then you're not supposed to admit it, which is weird because I think the rock and roll lifestyle is so boring. I like, I've, I've heard about it for... I mean, before I was born, it's been going on. I'm so sick of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It sounds like uh, top 40 music. It makes my knees hurt because, you know, I'm so bored, like shopping <laughs> with your mom or something. Right. Um, and I think this is just fascinating. So um, I don't blame them for thinking it's fascinating, but I think they don't. I think it's more that they think you're not supposed to have a, a normal life, like you said. <laughs> You're not supposed to want to do this. <laughs> That's what's fascinating to them. No, it just seems like a, a weird preoccupation, like maybe because, you know, it's alien to them or you know, right. to a lot of people, you know, who are like so live, eat, breathe, sleep, the music business. And right. it, it just seems, you know, weird that someone, you know, wouldn't live in, in the middle of a big city and just do that and not have any any kind of normal. But see, that is weird, too. To equate music with the music business is bizarre. But people do that. Yeah, you know? they do. They do. Exactly. Uh, I. But the music business has so little to do with music itself. And my family, like loving my husband and my babies and having a real life where I work hard, has everything to do with music. Well, it makes sense to me, but <laughs> to some people, I just think it seems strange. Yeah. Is, I don't, I don't I know why. Otherwise, they wouldn't write about it so much. So, do you think, um, I mean, based on the fact that this record seems to be, you know, it does seem to be doing well, do you, how is that going to affect the muses, or like, how will you, do you think you'll do this again, or it was this kind of a one-off, or? Um, they're supposed to be kind of parallel careers since it only takes a couple of weeks to make a record it shouldn't right. take much time in other muses it's just working the records it takes a lot of time um, do you I think, think though that I mean, even if that's so that will the you know the way you did this record and the sound you got how do you think it'll affect your your songwriting or recording with the muses um we already made the next muses record we went in right after Hips and Makers was finished okay um and it the band seems to be moving along, you know, the way it would anyway. Uh, I I think they would be two compensatory um, sounds rather than now I'm old and soft and <laughs> <laughs> everything's nice here. Who, who's um, in the band right now besides you and David? Uh, Bernard George. Uh -huh. The same trio that toured Red Heaven. Okay. Um, and this, this record is... Um, in an extension of Red Heaven, but it doesn't have the live treatment. It's um, it's a little sweeter and um, sweeter than Red Heaven, and it uh, is more produced, but not in a fakey way. It's very organically produced. It's just that we took the time instead of letting everything fly all over the microphones and watching the meters go in the red. Um, we just made up sounds for right. five months. <laughs> What 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 other plans do you have besides? I know the tour starts what next week, I think, uh, or yeah. two yeah next week. 
do you have anything is that kind of what you're like looking to do right now or yeah um i have been working this record um since we were in the studio with the muses and um I've been working really hard. <laughs> Stop. When you're by yourself, there's no one really to take the slack. So um, all of my promotional tours and um, this UK European tour have just been crazy. Just sleeping two hours a night and never eating and not seeing the kids for months at a time. And, um, you don't take them on tour with you, do you? I, I took the baby and then his nanny like busted her neck or something and had to go home, so he did too, and it was real sad for everyone. Um, he He's not having a, a great time with us leaving. My seven-year-old is used to it. It's happened his whole life, but it's still not a good thing. The dog didn't even know us when we came back. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're, we're trying to figure out how to have a life and a job. Do you play music for them, you kids? Um, Ryder really hates my guitar as a kind of sibling rivalry gesture. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he decided it's what takes me away from him, and so um, he just, you know, if I try to sneak in a practice, he comes over and says, Oh, gang now, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> okay, well, um... I, uh, I don't have any other questions I could think of offhand. Um, is there anything else I should know about or <laughs> you don't want to tell me? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. You could say I'm not crazy. Oh, you're definitely not crazy. That was the other thing I always thought on those. It didn't happen so much the last time, I think, but older articles always made some big deal about how, you know, this was a band that was, you know, insane and then there was just why there was people leaving and there was just all it just seemed to like really i don't know overreact to it i mean in terms of the press that you that you got yeah i don't know why i agree <laughs> I, I was never anything but a goofy little kid and then a goofy little woman and then they do that i mean i kind of don't blame them um since they have a job to do but it's just not accurate so I'm the one who has to live with it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. It was nice talking to you, sir. You too. I, I appreciate you calling me and everything. Um, I know, you know, Saturday can be inconvenient for people, but... It means nothing to me. never have any idea what day it is. Well, that's good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to seeing you. I'm, I think I'm going to the, uh, the Irving Plaza show. Oh, okay. So, um... I'm really psyched to see it. Cool. Stop and say hi. Okay. Thanks, Christian. Take care, Greg. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.